hermetic call from out of the past. Stories, strange and weird. Tales of mystery and terror by radio's masters of the macabre. Stories of the supernatural, the supernormal, dramatizing the fact, the mystery, the unknown. We tell you this frankly, so if you wish to avoid the excitement and tension of these magnets, play, play, we urge you, our radio, seriously, to turn off your radio now. This week on The Horror, we'll hear from Nightmare, a series produced for mutual stations that aired from October of 1953 to September of 1954, hosted by Peter Lorre. This episode aired March 31st, 1953. It's titled Chance of a Ghost. Out of the dark of night, from the shadows of the senses comes this, the fantasy of fear. Nightmare. Starring as your exciting guide to terror, Peter Lorre. Well, you don't believe in ghosts. Careful now. Don't be so sure of yourself because, uh, because I know the story of a woman who didn't believe in ghosts either. And she made a business of it. Until one day, terror struck from behind the dark veil. You are listening to Peter Lorre tell you of the chance of a ghost. Now, about this woman, uh, oh yes, Sonia Gale. Sonia was a medium. She made her a living out of death. <laughs> you know what a medium is. They hold seances, they, they lift tables and chairs. They make weird voices come out of nowhere. They say they are in touch with a dead. <laughs> You don't believe it? Oh, you don't believe in ghosts, huh? Well, neither do I, most of the time. And neither did Sonia, at first. Stephen? Stephen, can you hear me, Stephen? Stephen, where is it? Stephen, tell me. Oh, come on, Myra, let's get out of here. Ben, please. I say this is ridiculous. Come on, let's go. Oh, oh, yes, little one, yes, little one. Stay seated, Mr. Jones. Don't move. She's contacted her control, baloney. Ben, please, please don't move. Put your hands on the table, Ben, or you'll break the trance. Can't you see she's in the trance? She's been in the trance all her life. Baloney, please. Every time we come here, she goes into one of those phony trances. And we still haven't seen her spoken to Stephen. Quiet, Mr. Jones. You'll destroy the sound. You ask me. We're in the trance for coming here, paying good money for this foolishness. Oh, little one, I yeah, I didn't hear a thing myself. Stephen, we want to talk to Stephen Jones. Ask him where the money is. Be quiet, please, Mrs. Jones. One thing at a time. She has to talk to the control first. The money, Stephen. Tell me where it is. Little one, ask him where. Where the money is. The money. Jones, you destroyed it. I'm going. Get the lights on, Charlie. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what happened? He broke the spell. You shouldn't have moved, Ben. You shouldn't have taken your hand off the table. Oh, baloney. Come on, Myra. Let's go. Uh, Mr. Jones, I don't know why you come here if you don't intend to cooperate. My wife wants to come. That's why. But I must speak to Stephen. We'll let you know, Mrs. Jones. We'll let you know if Madame Gale will let you have another apartment now. We'll, we'll call you. Oh, uh, all right. Come, Ben. I've been ready for an hour and a half. It's all your fault. My fault. You haven't been so impatient. Take your hands off the table. Oh, my fault. They gone? Yeah. They're gone. Boy, I need a drink, will you, Charlie? Sure. Hey, you, Lyle? I'm always ready for a drink after one of these sessions. Oh, Lyle, old now, don't start up again. I haven't said a word. I can see it coming. Bottoms up? Thanks, Charlie. Luck, Lyle? Something I can always use. Oh, well, how'd I do? Oh, you were wonderful, Sonia, as usual. <laughs> I haven't lost my acting ability. I only wish you'd put it where it belongs, on the stage. Oh, Lionel, I thought you said you were going to be nice. Never said any such thing. Well, I'm tired. I can't stand another argument. As usual. Charlie, huh? Charlie, I'm ashamed. Both for myself and Sonia. Now, look, old boy, there's no need to... No, I, I really am. And I just had to say... Oh, shut up. One of these days, I will. Hey, I seem to be in the way around here, and anyway, I've got a dinner engagement. Don't be silly, Charlie. Fix us another drink. <laughs> no, 
another chop, Charles. Huh? Oh, no, 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 thanks. So you're going to give them another apartment? Well, why not? Tanya, those people aren't made of money, you well, know. Well, they got more than we've got. Rob the rich to feed the poor, that's what I say. Pass the string beans, Charlie. Hmm? String beans. Oh, Tanya, where's your conscience? Oh, Lionel, stop Tanya, I... I don't have any conscience. You used to have one when we were married, you had a... When we were married, you had a job. Well, because I haven't had a stroke of bad luck doesn't mean that you have to indulge in a dishonest, unscrupulous racket. A stroke of bad luck. Five years now. Some stroke. <laughs> Now, what's the matter? Sonia, I'm not going to play the part of your stooge any longer. Now, just a minute. You can get somebody else to help you with your hypocrisy. You can get another assistant to rig the wires that make the hands float and the table rise. I'm getting out. Oh, you're going to look for a job? I didn't say that. Of course you didn't. I'm going out for a walk. I'll see you, Charlie. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I've got a cigarette, Charlie. Sure. Thanks. Well, I guess this evening hasn't been exactly enjoyable for you. Look, Sonia, maybe I should mind my own business, but... But what? Go ahead, sir. Well, every time I come over here lately, you tour up and at it, always about the same thing, this seance business of yours. So? Well, I suppose you did give it up. Suppose you... Don't be silly. But it might make things better, Sonia, for you and Lionel. Never in a million years. Come on, Charlie, out with it. It's not just your interest in Lionel's and my welfare. You're against the two. Well, not exactly. Look, Instances. my brother was a spiritualist. There's a difference, Sonia. Martin was admired when he was alive because because he was sincere. He believed in what he was doing. And I don't. Admittedly. All right. So I'm in it for the money. That's the difference. And a good, sound, sensible difference it is, too. If other people believe in ghosts, why shouldn't I take advantage of it? Why shouldn't I? <laughs> Stephen, I hear a little one. Careful now. This is a dangerous moment. Don't move. Ask him where he is. Ask him where the money is. Stephen, Stephen Jones. Look, Ben. A hand floating in space. Stephen, Stephen Jones, your sister wants to know. Where the money is. Where's the money, Stephen? Where did you hide the money? space like that. I, I'm all right. Sonia, what's the matter? Lionel, it, it wasn't me. What? What wasn't you? That, that voice, it wasn't me, Lionel. I didn't fake Stephen's voice. Oh, Sonia, come off it. Now, don't tell me it was a ghost. But it wasn't me. It... Phone. Hello? Oh, oh, yes. I will, yes. Uh, the bill? Yes, I'll send it. Yes. Goodbye. Well, who was that? This is Jones. She said they found the money under the third floorboard in the attic. Oh, Lionel. Of course not, Sonia. You know better than that. You who have made a business of this sacred for so many years. You who know all the tricks. There's no such thing as a real ghost, is there? Yes, there, Sonia. Hmm. Sonia doesn't seem to be so sure anymore. Because. Because she's trapped. Trapped in a living nightmare. Real ghost. Is that what I said before? No. Can there be such a thing as a real ghost? Of course not. Because, because ghosts are not real, are they? You can put your hand right through them. That is, uh, if you have the nerve. If 
fear doesn't freeze every muscle in your body and even start with a terrified scream that, that big exit from your throat. <laughs> well, but now let's, let's get back to Sonia. Poor soul. She's been living with ghosts so long. She's beginning to act like one. She's withdrawing from reality. <laughs> I tell you, you've got to give it up. I won't. Now, stop harping at me. Harping at you? You ought to be glad I'm harping at you. I, it shows I'm interested in your welfare, right, Charlie? Now, look, don't drag me into this. Leave him alone, Lionel. Oh, and leave me alone. You've been at this so long, you're beginning to believe in your own fakery. That's not true. Now, wait a minute, Sonia. You said only... I a... didn't say I believed in my own fakery. All right, right, argue over exact words if you want to, but when you told us about that I point... I only said I didn't fake it. Which means that you believe it came out of the air. Well, what else am I to think? There, you see? You do believe it was a ghost. I didn't say that. Then what are you saying? I'm saying I can't find any answer, that's what. I'm saying that so far there isn't any explanation. I'm saying I've got to find out. Find out what, Sonia? Oh, I don't know, Charlie. I I, I don't know anymore. I'm so well, that's confused. why I want you to give this up, Sonia. Because you're so confused. Because it's not good for your mind. There's this kind of way. Oh, leave me alone. Sonia, I'm warning you. Well, stop warning me. But if you don't give up this ridiculous... How business, can I give it up now? What? I said, how can I give it up now when there's no explanation? I know there aren't anything like ghosts. I've known that all my life, and I still know it. But this, this, this is something different, don't you see? I didn't fake that voice. I know I didn't, and I've got to find out how it happened. All of which means, in other words, that you're not so sure anymore, Sonia. That you do believe it was a ghost. Oh, don't be silly. All right, then you're going on. You're going to continue the seance. Yes, I... I have to. Stephen Jones, little one. Can you let us speak with Stephen Jones? Ask him where the rest of the money is. Yes. He'll be back. He always comes back. If he doesn't come back, you'll have to find a job, and you can bet your bottom dollar he won't do that. Look, Sonia, why don't you meet him halfway? Oh? Give up this medium business. If you do that, maybe Lionel will go out and get a why job. Why should I give it up? It brings in money. Lots of money. Plenty of suckers around who believe in ghosts. If people are going to spend money anyway, why shouldn't I collect it? A certain amount of truth in that. But, Sonia, uh, speaking of people who believe in ghosts, you did just the other day. Who, me? That voice. My imagination, a trick of the mind. I just... But you weren't so sure the other day. Well, I am now. Nothing happened in yesterday's seance. True, but you still haven't found that explanation you were looking for for that voice. I don't need it. I tell you, it was my imagination. I thought I didn't fake that voice, but I must have. Simple. You weren't so sure about it the other day. You keep saying that. You weren't sure, Sonia. But I am now. Are you, Sonia? Of course. What... What makes you think I'm not? your hand on the table, Ben. Stop fidgeting. I'm not fidgeting. Yes, the table's moving. Yes, little one, I hear. I hear you. Yes, I hear you, little one. See, stop, little one. Be quiet. Ben, look. 
Huh? Look, look, Dan, a light. A shape, a shape in the light. You can see right through it. It's a ghost. It's Steve. It, it must be Steve. <laughs> Where's the door, Steve, old boy? Where's the rest of the door? Look, it's coming closer. Is that you, Steve? Is that you? What will I do? What can I do? But this is nonsense, Sonia. You know what I know. There's no such thing as ghosts. But I saw him, Charlie. I saw him and I heard him. Now listen, Sonia. He had a message for me. It was just in your head, your imagination. A message? But what message, Charlie? Oh, I'm so frightened. And I asked it so badly. I I screamed. I screamed and swore at him. He'll be mad, Charlie. He'll be mad in there. Now, now, stop it, Sonia. You know it wasn't Martin. Dead people can't come back. It was your imagination. No. No, because Mrs. Jones saw and heard him, too. And Ben Jones, he was there, and he saw Martin and heard him. Sonia. It was Martin, Charlie. My dead brother Martin, dead for ten years, and he came back. Now, why in the world I don't know. I don't know why he did. But he wanted to tell me something. What, Charlie? Oh, I'm so frightened. I'm so frightened, Charlie. Sonia, you've got to pull yourself out of this. He's mad, Charlie. He's mad with me for behaving the way I did, for screaming at him. That's why I'm frightened, because Martin was always so spiteful, because I... Sonia... You killed me. Sonia, stop it. Now, stop it, Sonia. There wasn't any good... But I saw him. I saw Martin. Impossible. No. No, you're wrong, Charlie. Not impossible. You're wrong. It was a ghost. It was Martin. And he's come back. He's come back to tell me something and to haunt me. <laughs> I told her that quiet here she comes. What's the matter, Sonia, dear? Nothing. You've been walking around the house for days just as though you were in a trance. What is it? I'm all right, Lionel. I'm all right now. I know what I have to do now. Know what you have to do? What do you mean? I know what my work is now. Huh? What work, Sonia? You see, I've thought it through. I've figured it out. Figured what About Martin. Oh, now, Sonia, I told you it was a hallucination. No, no, you're wrong, Lionel. I know it was Martin, and now I know why he came back. Now I know what he wanted to tell me. What, Sonia? Martin wants me to continue his work. The work he left ten years ago when he died. What? Yes. You see, he's been watching me. 
He's been watching me make a fool of myself, holding seances and not believing in them. So he came back. He came back to admonish me, to teach me a lesson, and to ask me to give my heart to it now and to carry on his work. What? Sonia, this is ridiculous. No, no, at last I know the truth. Now I can really begin. Goodness, Charlie, Charlie, what, what are we going to do? Now, take it easy, Lionel. Yes, now I can go on without being frightened. Now, now, wait a minute, Sonia. Yes, Martin came back to now, tell Now, now, wait a minute, and... please. Martin didn't come back. I know he didn't come back, and so does Charlie here. Now, now, listen to me, Sonia. Charlie and I, Charlie and I have something to tell you. Tell me? Now, now, you're, you're not going to like this, uh, Sonia, but it's the only way. I, I just have to do it. Now, listen carefully to me. Sonia, Charlie and I, Charlie and I faked Martin's ghost. No. Yes, we, we faked Martin's ghost. His voice, too, with a recording tape. And that other voice, Stephen, we, we faked that, too. No. We did it, Sonia. We did it because we thought it was the, the only way to pull you out of this nonsensical No. Life. We were trying to frighten you, dear. We were trying to frighten you so that you'd give it up. We, we fake the ghost and then the voices without your knowledge. No, 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 that's but not true. But I tell true. you, it is true. It is. Isn't it, Charlie? Isn't it true? Yeah, yeah, it, it's true, Sonia. Lionel's right. We did fake those No, ghosts. you're just trying to trick me. But, Sonia... You're trying to make me believe that Martin didn't come back. But he didn't. It was Charlie. Charlie faked his voice. I know. I just won't believe it. Now, I won't because I know that Martin came back. I know what I have to do now. Sonia! I must carry on his work. I know that now. And nothing can stop me. I must put my heart into it, and I must give my life to the realm of the spirit and help others to speak to their loved ones. And I must contemplate and work. Oh, no. Want a drink? Make it a double. Oh, everything turned out wrong. Backwards. Well, this was all your idea, Charlie. Now look what happened. Now look what you've done. Look what I've done. Now hold on. You went along with it. You thought it'd scare her out of that stuff. All right, all right. But it was your idea. Only one thing I can't understand. What? When I faked the voice of Stephen Jones, that was all nonsense I said about the money being under the third floor board in the attic. But then, then they found it there. How come? I need another drink. So do I. So, in a dark of night, if you see a light, don't be scared and don't you faint. Just remember, in your fright, there's nothing there because ghosts ain't. <laughs> That's the horror for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. You can find more from Nightmare at relicradio.com where you'll find thousands of other old-time radio episodes. More from the horror, all the other podcasts, our shoutcast stream. You can donate through the website if you'd like to help support it all. It's all available for free thanks to your support. Visit donate.relicradio.com if you'd like to help out or click on the link on the website. Thank you, as always, to those who have. Thanks for joining me today. Be back next Sunday with a story from Beyond Midnight on another episode of The Horror. RelicRadio.com presents tales of the strange and bizarre, the weird and the wicked. Stories not necessarily of the supernatural, but of the unnatural. Join us now for Strange Tales, featuring radio drama at its most mysterious and unusual. This is Strange Tales. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me this Sunday. We'll hear from The Weird Circle this week, a series that was produced between 1943 and 1945. 78 episodes in all, aired at one time or another over all the major networks. The story today is from November 27th, 1943. It's titled, The Lifted Veil.
By what token can man live after death? By his work. Poe, de Maupassant, Balzac. These great writers of horror stories live on. Listen to the Weird Circle. Out of the past, phantoms of a world gone by speak again the immortal tale, The Lifted Veil. A certain Dr. Minier was working in the experimental laboratory of his office when young Latimer Hemming dropped in to see him. The two friends smiled genially at each other. Then Latimer suddenly started pacing nervously up and down the length of the room. I, I don't know why I came to you, Doctor. You're the last person in the world I'd expect to believe in psychic phenomena. I don't know about that. What's bothering you, Latimer? Well, it's, it's all so incredible. Frankly, I don't expect you to believe me. Why don't you stop pacing the floor? Sit down quietly in a chair and tell me the whole story. Here. Sit down here. Well, I had a vision. A premonition, a, a warning. The veil of the future lifted and I saw into it. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. No, I, I'm not insane. There's never been any insanity in my family. Ask my father. He'll tell you that... The Hemmings are constitutionally solid as a rock. Yes, yes, I know. Uh, tell me more about this lifting of the veil, this premonition. Well, the first time it occurred was about three years ago, shortly before Bertha and I were married. The first time, eh, Latimer? Yes, it's... Well, it, it's recurrent. It, 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 it comes again and again. Oh. Uh, go on. Well, I, I see the face of a woman. She's lying in bed. Her... Her face is a death mask. Mm, you choose nice visions. Now, please don't make fun of it. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, anyway, suddenly the woman sits upright in bed, points an accusing finger at me and says, You killed one man, and you'll kill another. And then, laughing hysterically, she falls back into bed. Mm-hmm. And then what happens? Well, then the vision becomes hazy and disappears. Now, don't tell me I've been working too hard. I've never done an honest day's work in my life. I'd say forget the whole thing. Yes, that's what I was afraid of. I've been trying to dismiss it from my mind, Dr. Munier, but... Well, the other day... The other day, my wife hired a new maid, a person by the name of Archer Bernard. What's so extraordinary about that? She has the exact same face as the face in my vision. A perfect replica. Oh... What'll I do, Doctor? Shall I, shall I tell Bertha? Shall I force her to discharge the maid? You know how practical Bertha is. She'll think I've lost my mind. Yes, she will. I don't know how to advise you, Latimer. But if this archer girl threatens your peace of mind, there's only one thing to do. You mean dismiss her? Yes. But I wouldn't tell Bertha the real reason. Hmm? Any excuse will do. Yes, of course. Don't make an issue out of it, Latimer. Women get stubborn at times. Yes, how well I know that. Uh, doctor, would you do me a favor? Why, certainly. You're a good friend of Inspector Kane at headquarters. Would you have him do a little checking up on Archer? Yes. Yes, I'll do it. No harm in investigating a woman, I suppose. Stranger visions than this one of yours, my boy, have come to my attention. Well, <laughs> I'll see you at dinner tonight. At dinner? Yes, your wife invited me. Oh, and frankly, I'm rather curious to see this new maid, Archer Bernard, myself. Well, good night, Doctor, good night. and thanks. Thanks tremendously. Archer? Archer? Yes? Answer the doorbell, will you? Of course. Right away, madam. Good evening, Mr. Hemming. Oh, good evening, Archer. I, I'm sorry, I forgot my keys. Is my wife in? In the living room, sir. Oh, thank you. Hello, darling. I'm sorry I'm so late. You are late, Latimer. Shame on you. There'll be guests for dinner this evening. What kept you so long? I dropped by Dr. Muneer's office. Aren't you feeling well? 
No, not too well. Oh, poor pet. Is my father coming over this evening? Yes, and please be nice to him. I'll be charming to him. That is, if he'll just stop trying to run my entire life for me. You can't really blame him, Latimer, if he's impatient to become a grandfather. I don't mind wishful thinking, but he's pretty insistent on my having a son. Just keep humoring him. After all, he's worked hard all his life and built up a large fortune. He just wants to be sure there'll be heirs to carry on the name. Bertha. Yes? What is it, dear? You know that new maid, Archer. I ought to know. I hired her. Bertha. Bertha, I wish you'd get somebody else in her place. She, She's incompetent. I find her exceedingly capable. Well, she's impudent. Well, I'll talk to her about it. Please, Bertha, if you don't mind. I just as leave you didn't... Darling, if you had any idea how much trouble I've gone to to get, well, any kind of help at all out here, you'd realize what a perfect gem archer is. You concentrate on your father and let me worry about the servant's pet. Yes, but... I won't hear another word about it, Latimer. Now go upstairs and get dressed. Your father and the doctor will be here within the hour, and if you're not prompt, your father will take out his temper on me. So hurry, dear, please. I won't be long. Hurry, dear. You always dawdle so long. I'll hurry. I wonder. Perhaps if I'd told Bertha the truth. Maybe it's all in my mind anyway, but, but the vision, the premonition, so recurrent. I might try talking to the girl myself. Oh, no, that wouldn't be right. What are you doing in this room, Archer? I, uh, oh, well, I... Well, you what? I was just straightening up a bit, sir. I thought you straightened my room this morning. It needed straightening again. Oh, did it indeed? I found it quite in order after you were through the first time. And what's this? That, sir? This package. Oh, give it to me, sir. I, I almost forgot it. Oh, no, no, no. Don't unwrap it. Please. Why? Well, I, I... Poison. Yes. Rat poison. What for? Rats in the basement. Your wife asked me to get it. She did. Well, this isn't the basement, Archer. I know, sir. I, I'm sorry, sir. I, I Take I that I... rat poison and stay out of my room. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. I wonder. I wonder. Archer Bernard. A face in my dream. My evil genius. I'm sorry I'm late, Father. Awfully sorry. I warned him not to be late, Dad. Latimer has never been on time for anything in his life. I speak with authority. I'm sorry, Father. I'm sorry. Uh, Hello, Doctor. Your wife has been entertaining us very well in your absence, Latimer. Do you think so, Doctor? I'm sure of it, my dear. You've more charm than the law allows, anyway. (laughs) You are nice, Doctor. (laughs) Sometimes, though, I think you're afraid of me. What's this? What's this, Doctor? Afraid of my daughter-in-law? Nonsense. Complete nonsense. Bertha was only joking, Father. Joking? Why? What was funny about it? I'm sorry if I don't see the point. We Hemmings have always had a very highly developed sense of humor. Constitutionally speaking, anyway. What? I don't hardly hear you. Dinner is served, Mrs. Hemming. Thank you, Archer. Well, come along, all of you. I think we need a new topic of conversation. Yes, obviously, Bertha. <laughs> Go ahead, Father. You sit next to me, Dad. Doctor, over here. Thank you. And you at the foot of the table, Latimer. Such is ever the husband's lot. What? What? Uh, do you know, Dr. Manier, we've been hearing a lot about you lately in the village. Ah, oh, that's why I've been invited over this evening. Your feminine curiosity has been aroused, eh? <laughs> Frankly, yes. Uh, About what, Doctor? About what? Mrs. Hemming is curious, I think, about the experiments I've been performing. What experiments are those? Well, I've been experimenting with a new serum. I have the typical doctor's age-old hope of bringing the dead back to life. Oh, is that why your office is so littered with mice and rabbits? Yes, quite. Have you succeeded? No, not completely. But I've had some interesting results. If I inject my serum into the veins of a dead animal, I... Well, I can bring back a heartbeat for a period of ten seconds or so. At least under certain conditions. Why, it it sounds barbaric. What are the conditions? If the animal has died of poison. 
I don't think this is dinner conversation. I think it's fascinating, Bertha. You would, dear. I don't believe it. Uh, Mr. Hemming will carve the roast, Archer. Uh, yes, ma'am. Doctor, what is the procedure you usually go through in this experiment? I, um, uh, well, usually I feed the animal, preferably a white rat, regular rat poison. It works very fast and painlessly. I disguise the poison in milk which I feed my victim. Archer, really? I'm sorry, ma'am, awfully sorry. I, I didn't mean to drop the plate. Uh, uh, go on with your theory, Doctor. Um, then I use the serum. I, I, I wait approximately one half hour. Then I go ahead. How do you inject the serum, Doctor? Are you really interested, Bertha? Yes, very. By hypodermic. I have one in my medical bag in case you'd like to see it. Uh, don't bother. Don't, don't bother. I don't believe you can bring a dead man back to life by injection. I don't believe it. <laughs> There's no convincing father, Doctor. You might as well give up. Uh, talking of poison reminds me. I didn't know where you had any rats in the cellar, Bertha. What are you talking about, Latimer? Well, Archer told me the house was infested and you ordered her to buy rat poison this afternoon. Nonsense, Latimer. Will you care for gravy on your meat, Doctor? No, thanks. Just as is. None for me, either. I'm a man who doesn't believe in gravies. Never have. Never have. I know you will, Latimer. Archer. Yes, ma'am? The gravy for Mr. Hemming. Yes, ma'am. Am I the only gravy eater in the house? <laughs> Obviously, darling. And I had Archer prepare a special gravy for you. It's very good for you. Latimer loves cream gravies, Doctor. He's like a child about them. Here you are, sir. Oh, thank you, Archer. Cream gravies. Mmm. Be careful not to get any rat poison in that, Latimer. Or you might be my first human experiment. And I'm looking for one. Well, I hope I don't fit the qualifications, Doctor. I shouldn't enjoy the prospect of being a corpse. Enjoyable evening, Bertha. A very enjoyable evening. Nothing I enjoy so much as discussing life. Yes, discussing life. You must drop over soon again, Father. Latimer? I wonder where he's gone. Probably to the kitchen. He raids iceboxes at midnight. I'll get him, Bertha. Never mind. He'll come out eventually. If Dad doesn't mind waiting. No, I'll go get him. I don't see how you put up with him at times, Bertha. A lovely girl like yourself must have a lot of patience. Stand for my son's nonsense. He's my husband. Oh, you scared me for a minute, Doctor. Did I, Latimer? Your family is asking for you. What are you doing? I'm collecting some of this cream gravy for you in this little bottle. Would, would you test it at the laboratory? It tasted funny to me, and I've been feeling slightly ill. Come, come. Don't be a slave of your imagination. Oh, will you examine this gravy anyway tonight, please? Of course, my boy, of course. If you don't feel well later on, I'll give you a pill to take, just in case. I hope I have some with me. Yes, I hope you do, too. Oh, yes, here they are. Right in my right-hand pocket. You're a walking hospital. I always carry three things with me. My hypodermic with serum in case somebody should die of poison. My pills for emergencies such as this. And a good pouch of tobacco. <laughs> I never like anybody else's. Oh, thank you, Doctor. I'll drop by in the morning, and you can give me the report on this gravy. Do that, Latimer. Yes, indeed. Do that. I'd better put the bottle in my pocket so no one sees it. Well, come along. Let's go back to the living room. All right. Well, Doctor, did you finally dig Latimer out of the kitchen? Yes, indeed. Well, I must be going, Latimer. Good night, Father. Come again soon. I will. I will. And I hope the next time I come, you two will have joyous news for me. Yes, Father. I'll walk you home, Mr. Hemming. Fine, Doctor. Good night, Latimer. Good night, my dear. Good night, Father. I'll uh, see you in the morning, Latimer, eh? Yes, Doctor, in the morning. Well, it's been a long evening and a very dull one. Yes, very dull. I'm tired. So am I. Uh, Bertha, about Archer. Latimer, are you going to start that again? Yes. 
She lied to me about the rat poison, and frankly, I don't trust the girl. It's just your imagination. I'll talk to her in the morning. I wouldn't worry if I were you. If I don't get a satisfactory explanation, I promise I'll discharge her immediately. Yes, I wish you would, dear. I'd feel much better about the whole thing if you would. Very much better. I'm very tired, Bertha. I'm going upstairs to bed. Oh, good morning, Latimer. Good morning. You keep your word, don't you? Up at the very break of dawn. I didn't sleep very well last night, Doctor. I don't wonder. Come in, come in. You see, as soon as my wife and I were upstairs, I had a recurrence of the premonition. You did? Yes. Hmm. That's very strange. Why? Sit down, Latimer, and I'll show you why. Sit down over here near these two test tubes. Over here? Yes, that's right. Now, look. Here are two test tubes with colorless liquid inside them. Yes. In this little box next to the first test tube is some rat poison. Now, as I drop some into the first test tube, what happens? The liquid is turning red. Very good so far. Now, in this jar is the cream gravy you were served last night. As I drop some into this tube, what happens? It turns pink. Which means only one thing. That a small amount of rat poison is present in the gravy. A small amount? Just enough to make you ill, not to kill you. It's a cute little trick. Progressive illness. Nobody would ever suspect poison in that case. It would take about seven months before you die. Nice girl, aren't you, huh? Yes, very nice. But why has this been tried? That's what interests me. Why? Doctor, I haven't the faintest idea. Uh, what did you find out about Archer Bernard? Well, I asked Inspector Kane, and he suggested I drop in this morning. Could you go over with me right away? Yes, of course. He has all the information we'll want. Oh, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Come in, come in, come in. Good morning, Inspector Kane. Morning. This is Latimer Hemming, the gentleman I told you about. Yes, yes, yes. How do you do? How do you do, sir? Sit down, gentlemen. I understand you've inquired about a certain Archer Bernard. Yes, I did. What do you know about her? We ask you first. Well, we've already made quite a thorough investigation of the lady in question. Yes. Her name is not Archer Bernard, but Doreen Macefield. Macefield? Why, that's my wife's maiden name. Doreen Macefield? Why, why, this Archer woman must be my wife's sister, yes. She's her sister. Dr. Bertha once told me about her sister. Yes, Doreen Maysfield was arrested five years ago for petty theft. She was released from prison only a few months back. Well, why are you looking for her now? Because at that time, she was also suspected of murder. Poisoning? Exactly. The victim was a man, was a friend of your wife. Well, what happened, Inspector? The evidence was insufficient to indict her at the time, but conclusive proof fell into our hands quite by accident the other day. Your call was coincidental. You were about to go to your house to pick her up. Well, why don't you come along with us, Inspector? Yes, my carriage is waiting outside. Splendid, Doctor, splendid. Poor Bertha, spending her lifetime trying to protect her sister just because she loves her. Why didn't she confide in me? When we see Bertha and her sister together, we'll have the answer to many things. Latimer, Hello, I... darling. Are you all right? Of course I'm all right. This is Inspector Kane, Mrs. Hemming. How do you do? What's this all about? Uh, come in, Inspector. Thank you. <clears throat> Latimer. It's... Darling, it's it's about Archer. Archer? Just what is it? Bertha, I know the truth about Archer. Uh... Why didn't you tell me? Uh, Latimer, Archer is my problem. I didn't want to burden you. Now, Mrs. Hemming, don't you worry. Just call in your sister, please. I can't, Inspector. I can't. The inspector's not going to hurt her, dear. He just wants to talk to her. There's nothing for you to be afraid of. Latimer. You've protected your sister all your life, Bertha, you poor darling. Go ahead, Mrs. Hemming. Call her. Archer. Archer. Look, Doctor, look. Her face is bloodless. It's ghastly, like the face I see in my vision. Archer. She's sick, quickly. The woman's going to faint. Help me, Inspector. Cut his cause. Oh, I never... I never wanted I... Oh, oh. Archer. Oh, doctor. Doctor, save. Save. Archer. Oh, Doreen. Oh, oh Doreen, my darling sister. Doreen, speak to 
to me. It's no use, Bertha. Archer committed suicide. She's... Dead? Oh, no. No. Inspector, help me carry her into her room. I want to examine the body. Certainly. Oh, my sister. I'm loving sister. I loved her, Latimer. No matter what she did, I loved her. Of course you did, Bertha. Of course you did. Take your feet very gently, Inspector. Uh, which way is her room, Mrs. Hemming? At the head of the stairs. Ready, Doctor? I'll come along. No, I... no, Mrs. Hemming. No, Bertha. Why don't you go to your room and rest? If we need you, we'll call you. But I... Please, please, do as I say. I'm still your doctor, remember. All right. Latimer, as soon as you can, join me in Archer's room. Yes, Doctor, as soon as possible. Oh, Latimer, will you forgive me? Forgive you, Bertha. There's nothing to forgive. You're a very honest, faithful person. Now, come. Come along, darling. Lie down and rest. This has all been such a frightful shock to you. Oh, dear Latimer. So understanding. So understanding. My wife is resting now, Doctor. Good. And you can give us some help here. The half hour is almost over. You mean you're... Archer died of rat poisoning. I feel that this first human experiment will be a definite benefit to the future of science. Yes, but this is not a scientific laboratory, Doctor. No, I realize that. But this opportunity comes once in a lifetime. The doctor is quite right, Mr. Hemming. Give him permission to go ahead. If my wife ever found out, she'd die of horror. There's no need for her ever to know. The half hour is drawing to a close, Latimer. Have I your permission? I should say, has science your permission? Yes, of course, Doctor. Go ahead. Inspector, help me roll up the sleeve. Certainly. Now, what are you going to do? It's a good thing I always carry this with me. First, I draw some of my own blood. Uh, this way. Doctor, it's not as painful as it looks. Now, I mix my blood with a serum. Like this. Hmm. Fascinating, Doctor. How much longer have we got till the half hour is completed, Inspector? Three more seconds. Oh. Hmm. All right, Doctor. Now, I inject the serum into her arm. Like this. What are you doing, Doctor? Bertha, stay out of this room. Don't you dare experiment on my sister. Don't you dare. Hold her back, Inspector. Easy, my dear. Easy. Hey, look. Look, she's beginning to breathe again. It works. Oh, no. No. Oh, Bertha. Bertha, I hate you. Oh, no, sister, no. I went to jail for you five years ago because I loved you. No. And you were no, Bertha. No, oh, no, no. It was I that took the blame for everything you did. No, sister, no. Admit it, Bertha. Admit you killed one man. And you wanted to kill another because you hated him. The way you, she wanted to kill you, Latimer, rather than have a child. Kill you, yes. Yes, and get your father's money. I was going to tell you, but but she she poisoned me first. Oh. Archer. Archer. Oh, I can sustain her life no longer. Archer, Archer. Oh, I... I'm... I'm sorry. Archer Bernard is... is dead. She lied! She lied! She lied! I'll try to leave the room, Mrs. Hemming. You'll be wanted at headquarters. Oh, it's not true, Inspector. It's not true. I'm afraid it is, Latimer. When the dead return to life, they have too short a time to lie. Bertha, you... I'm sorry to have to tell you, Mr. Hemming, that we have suspected your wife for a long time. We could have proved her guilt without a voice from the grave. Come along, Mrs. Hemming. Bertha. Doctor. The veil. The lifted veil. The premonitions come true. From the time-worn pages of the past, we have brought you the immortal tale, The Lifted Veil. Bellkeeper, toll the bell. Strange Tales for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, you can visit relicradio.com. Find more from the Weird Circle, past episodes of Strange Tales, all the other podcasts, thousands of other old-time radio episodes, 
and our shoutcast stream that's all available at the website relicradio.com it's all free thanks to your support if you would like to help out visit donate.relicradio.com or click on the link on the website that's how this is all made possible thank you as always to those who have helped out thanks for joining me today I'll be back next Sunday with another episode of Relic Radio's Strange Tales.